Today we have a very special guest with us. He is a world famous Christian apologist and author. For more than 50 years, he has been involved with Campus Crusade, also known as Crew Ministries. He has addressed way over 25 million people and has given over 27,000 talks in 126 countries. He has spoken to more college kids and college campuses than anyone else in all of history. Since 1960, he has written and co-authored over 150 books in 128 languages. One of his most popular books in which I believe everyone has either heard of or read his book, More Than a Carpenter, which took him only 42 hours to write. More Than a Carpenter is one of the most read books in all of history. More than 200 million copies made. Another book of his that is very popular is Evidence That Demands a Verdict. And I'm so thankful that he wants truth and doesn't want us to go based off of feelings or emotions, but praise the Lord that he knows and teaches us that we have a ton of amazing evidence and trusted resources for us believers to be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that is in us. He is also a man that loves and leads his family very well. He not only loves his family well, but others. He is very passionate for the Lord as he knows that the Lord is very passionate for each one of us. It is my honor and privilege to welcome the one and only Dr. Josh McDowell. I just want to say thank you, Josh, for being here and uh, such a blessing to have you. Uh, I got saved back in 1982 and I remember the first time I heard you was at Oregon State University and you were with crew and you were speaking and I remember it was such an encouragement to me. I uh, it encouraged me to study the Bible and become a pastor for that. So I want well, to. Well, that's you. great. Yeah, I want to say we you used to that. call it. We called it Oregon Straight. <laughs> Oregon Straight. <Yeah. laughs> I don't know if that's Oregon though. I walked in, saw the audience. I said, "Wow, are they different than you of, oh, Oregon University? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. More conservative different. dress, nice, not dirty, anything. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, that was the old days. Uh, anyway, and I just want to say it was such a blessing. Oh, I've read your books, uh, More Than a Carpenter. When I got saved, my grandma made me read that. And didn't make me, but she gave it to me. And uh, Smart grandmother. <laughs> yep. And you wrote that. Didn't you write that in like, what, 42 hours or yeah. something? That's right, 42, 42 hours. hours. That's amazing. So you stayed up straight for that. You stayed mm -hmm. up the whole oh, yeah. time. That's amazing. Wow. And uh, that sold a few copies, hasn't it? <laughs> Well, it's about two hundred million in circulation. <laughs> yeah. I was hearing an author say I sold two billion the other day, and how excited that was! I think two hundred million—that's pretty wild. But anyway, that's uh, also digital. That's digital, also. Okay. What I love about your ministry is that you really train parents and grandparents and people to listen to their children, mm -hmm. not just preach at them, give them scripture, but to listen, let them feel comfortable coming to them. And that's the next question we want to ask you is about well god gave us two ears and one mouth yeah so i guess you're supposed to listen twice as much as you speak amen amen hey and josh i want to ask ahead. This. what's the next question we, josh will you be my friend because i have because no, dottie's <laughs> friends with my wife friend. but you, could, you know you and i did really Craig, hit you couldn't afford me <laughs> yeah. <You> couldn't afford. <laughs> yeah. He's like, i'm a very needy friend oh my me am i needy oh uh, bless you well oh. we well, what we love about you is that you are so encouraging, and we pray that we can encourage you because if you only knew how much you've touched my life and just seeing your passion and joy for the Lord and just you being excited and passionate, and it truly makes me want to be even that Aaron and her for you because you're doing so much. And even when you talk about how you ran up a hill and you walk around the marina, I'm like, <laughs> I want to work out. I want to do more because... It's, you just bring so much joy, and it truly is the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I just want to encourage you. I know that's how, a great verse. Yeah, and you are so busy, and we are so blessed that you can be here. But what we want to ask you is, yeah, but see, this morning I woke up, and when I saw you were going to be interviewing me, I yeah. said, "Oh Lord, what happened? Why couldn't I be as handsome as she is cute?" <laughs> <laughs> no, you. <laughs> and the Lord said, "But then, but then, you, I made Josh, you unique." But uh, Josh, you know, never try to be someone else because God created you to be you amen. and me to be me. Hey, and if you're not you and I'm not me, who will be us? Amen. But Josh, then you saw me and you felt very encouraged. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I said, oh, thank 
you, Lord, that I have a friend like Craig. Amen. Well, I wore these pants in yeah. honor of you because I know that Woo! you. Those are the kind of pants I'd wear. I yeah. know. That's why yeah. I wore them I for you because you inspire me with your dressing. And, Josh, we want to say this. One pr podcast we saw, the guy said he remembered what you wore, no, but we remember said. what you wear and what you Amen. say. So both. Amen. <laughs> both. Amen. But um, okay, what's your next question? So the next question is: During these trying times of isolation, how should should we spur one another on to stay away from temptations such as drugs, alcohol, pornography, which is a big one, and depression? One of the biggest things, say, if somebody's going through pornography, mm. and I do this with a friend of mine every day now, because being in isolation, it it feeds right into porn. Yeah. So every day I just call and say, how are you doing? Amen. And just listen, just listen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's one minute, sometimes it's 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then just pray and hang up. Amen. Uh, the best thing is just to ask someone, how are you doing? But then listen to them. Yep, mm -hmm. listen. If you don't get your two bits in, you don't get your two bits in. Mm -hmm. Just listen to them. Now I have to work at that hard because I'm a talker. <laughs> And Same here. But my wife, my wife has really helped me to develop the ability to listen. Amen. 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 And we love the verse that it talks about, um, James 5, 16, to confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed. And I love how you say that. It's so freeing when you can just share <laughs> and have someone that can Somebody listen trust. without judging you or saying, I can't believe you. Because what was freeing for me growing up as a child is being able to know that my dad wasn't going to judge me or look down at me if I said, hey, dad, I was just looking at something I shouldn't. Or, hey, dad, I was even struggling with the even crazy things I don't even care about sharing of like masturbation, like for girls, like even crazy things. I'm like, I don't care if people know because it's like my dad was so real with me to be like, you tell me that and I don't care. Because for me as a kid, I, we were sheltered. We couldn't do this or that. So I didn't do the bad things, but it was all religious. I did those things, the thoughts I would think. that. So I am thankful for you and how you speak up against pornography and how that is a big thing and teaching these parents because I think that's why my dad is the way he is because of you, because mm -hmm. you have taught and trained these parents to not make their kid feel like, hey, if you tell me, I can't believe you did that, like truly to be open and say, hey, dad, I messed up and my dad, truly just listening to me. If every child grew up with that, mm. I'd be out of business. <laughs> <laughs> there wouldn't be any ministry to young people. There wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, and you're right. This is so critical yes. that every child needs a father, Amen. especially the father, whether you're a daughter or a son, mm. that you can be authentic with, open with, and they'll be non-judgmental. Yeah. Won't start preaching to you. Yeah. Well, don't you know what God says? You know, the Bible says, but they'll listen to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then gradually speak truth into your life. Hey, Josh, yeah. can I ask you a question? I never had a father. My father left before I was born. Yeah. Was it, you kind of had a rough patch with your dad. Your dad got saved. It was really neat. You, but God. you had, was it hard for you uh, to be a father? I mean, how did you do that? Because I found like, I was so afraid to be a father because I never had one. <laughs> And the God just said, then, follow, you know, I'll lead you. Just follow me. But I was, Amen. like, so afraid. Yeah. Like, I didn't know what. I had nothing to go back on. Yeah. I was so scared to get married because I didn't. The only model of marriage I had was my parents. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a continuous battle. Yeah. And then I, I, I had such a fear of having children because mm -hmm. I didn't want kids to grow up in anything like what I grew up yeah. with an alcoholic father. And literally, when he wasn't trying to kill my mother, I was trying to kill him, literally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yep. uh, I grew up with a speech impediment mm. uh, of fear. And once I came to Christ, I gained such confidence in Christ. Yeah. Some people call it arrogance. No, but no, I gained no. so much confidence, I overcome through Christ my stutter. Wow. Amen. That's awesome. You, d d d you don't even hear me stutter. No. <laughs> but, and I'm thankful for that. Amen. Yeah. But God. what helped me uh, is several people in my life. One was a man by the name of Dick Day. He was in staff of crew going to Talbot Seminary, and I met him when I was a student there. He was a lot older than me. He's passed away now. And in many ways, he became a father figure to me, he became my best friend, my best friend in the whole world, Dick Day. 
And I learned so much from him. And then second, a man by the name of Jim Simmons. I dated this one young lady. She was one of twins, so I felt that's good. If you miss out on one, you got a second chance. How many people got a second chance? You know, if, oh, if it didn't work out with Paul, I could turn to Leslie. But anyway, uh, and we dated three and a half years. And once I made a mistake telling her, I don't know who I love most, you or your dad. Oh. <laughs> But her hey, father, like that. her father, Jim Simpson, oh, there's no one alive I admired more than Jim Simpson. Mm. And I watched how he raised his daughters. Whenever I went over there, I remember sitting in a little living room. He'd sit in the couch. I'd sit in his padded chair. And we would just share with the, the father. Yes. Oh, wow. He was there. And, and they'd always invite me to lunch. And I loved to go because not so much I could be with Paula, I mm-hmm. could be with her father, Jim. That's good. Amen. And that really uh, helped me a lot. And then there were several other people like that. And so I learned how to parent. And I learned the seven A's of parenting, which I'm sure, Craig, you've heard me share many yeah. times. Yeah. Uh, the seven A's. Uh, yeah. And I learned that to these different people I interacted with. And I got into scripture and say, wow, that's a principle, isn't it? And all came up with A's and I didn't plan on that. <laughs> that's great. I did not. That's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. But uh, that's how I became a better dad, yeah. was watching others. Yeah, mm. I say plagiarizing others. Amen. And that's, again, what you said, we need the church. We need the yes. body of Christ. Well, and I told many, I want to be a Dick Day and a Jim Simmons, Jim Simpson, to other people. Amen. 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 I want other people to come to love their children more, be a better parent, mm-hmm. come to love Christ because I've come into their realm of friendship. Amen. And that's one of my desires. Amen. Amen. So um, one of our questions too is we know that they say 40% of people are struggling with isolation and loneliness. So what would you say to that? Because I know that's a big thing. And we know you started a podcast, which is Resolution um, That's movement, right. which we're excited about. And I want to show all the youth and bring them to that. But so what would you say with people struggling with isolation and loneliness? Two of the top three epidemics in the world was loneliness and depression yeah. in every country, every culture, every yeah. continent. And what the isolation does, it exas- it feeds into it. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. what I say to a person is, Go to my website, mm-hmm. Josh. Josh. org forward slash loneliness okay. or forward slash depression or forward slash anxiety or forward slash porn, mm. and I can really help you. Yes. Yeah. With Amen. many documents and steps and what the Bible says, how you can overcome it, everything. And one thing when you're lonely. Reach out to others. Yep. Mm-hmm. Call. I've already said this, I think. Call a friend Amen. who you can, I call it, dump on. <laughs> and, and share with them, you know, I'm really feeling lonely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And share your feelings and let that person minister to you. Yeah. Yeah. What you'll find out is they're often feeling lonely too. Probably yep. 70% of the time your friend will say that. And you can minister to each other. Amen. And then... Think of how you can encourage others. Mm. Yep. How can you be meaningful in somebody else? For me, I write 20 notes a day of encouragement to people, and I make 10 phone calls or 10 emails uh, to people. I just sent yesterday, today's Tuesday, isn't it? Yes. Whatever it is. Yesterday, I sent 132 top Christian leaders around the world. I mean top of the totem poles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. An encouragement email. Wow. This morning already, I've gotten scores of comments back within several hours. Wow, yep. of, and almost every one of them, thank you, thank you for thinking of me. This was so encouraging to me yeah. and all that you would think of me. And I went, wow. Yeah. And how just a little note. And so, and what I did for them, I couldn't send them a note because I only had their emails, not their address. Mm-hmm. So I took a picture of me writing at my <laughs> desk over here in my, my office in my living room. Okay. And then I took a note and I wrote out very clearly that I was praying for them mm-hmm. through the virus and all and several things about them. And then 
in the top right of the email is a picture of me writing and the bottom left of the email is the note. Yeah. And I have, an, uh, I have a little script there saying, I wanted to write you a personal note, but I had to do this email because I don't have your physical address. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. People didn't refer to the email. They referred to the note yeah. I wrote. Yeah. And so reach out to other people. How can you encourage them? Uh, to neighbors and all. Uh, those are two of the biggest things uh, you can do. Uh, in loneliness and the other is get on a schedule yes yeah. you need a schedule for each day yeah. and schedule in things that you can accomplish at the end of the day and mm -hmm. look back and said wow yeah. i got this done i got that done my wife is going to bed sleeping so well at night because she's doing things in our bedroom or closets and all <laughs> that she dreamed i mean it was hard to walk into them now they're beautiful <laughs> and I'm, I'm carrying up bags of stuff for Salvation Army or trash? Yeah, I bet I've taken out 20, 25 large sacks of everything wow. that I can't believe where it was hidden in our <laughs> master bedroom. Exactly. But accomplish something every day. And then, you see, I take it for granted. Number one, the umbrella over everything. Spend some time in Scripture. Amen. Spend some time in Scripture and prayer. It does, I, I don't spend, <laughs> I probably shouldn't share this, but I don't spend long times in prayer. Mm. I hardly ever do. Like everybody, I don't. But I pray all the time. Amen. Yep, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. That's right. Yep. And so I learned that I'm a conscious attitude of prayer. So actually, I do pray long times. I pray 24-7. Yep. Amen. That's yep. great. I can't remember doing anything, no matter how trivial, that it wasn't a part of my consciousness of prayer. Yeah. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Well, if I'm going to walk, go out in the neighborhood, do this and that, then I need to walk with Christ. That means I need to listen to him, and I need to talk to him Amen. and ask him. Exactly. And so I pray without ceasing, Philippians. Yep, exactly. Can we? I want, if you have a second, I'd like to ask you one more. I don't know if we really hit on this, but you know they say, second has already gone by. But yeah, there you go. Sorry, a minute. How's that? But uh, they say that alcohol sales has gone up fifty percent in America, and you know you talked about because you stuff. I went. I was from an alcoholic family, mm -hmm. and you know the pain. What would you say to? Because you know, sadly, we've had Christians in our church admit they struggle with marijuana. We've had Christians admit, of course, pornography, mm -hmm. but they've also admitted like cocaine use. So what would you say besides your website, because we know that's great, but what would you say to somebody in this time of isolation? You've already said, get in the word, uh, go out to be, but what if it's something kind of scary, like you're struggling with drugs or alcohol and it's very shameful, even though hopefully What I would do is, it's all, see, it would depend on how well you knew that person. Mm. Yeah. If they were a perfect stranger, you'd say one thing. If you knew that person all, you would start sharing with them differently. But the number one thing is to find a meaningful question, ask it, and then just listen to them. Yeah. Let them talk. Often I ask, well, tell me, Bob, why do you drink? Mm -hmm. Why do you, you're drinking a lot. Why do you do that? And just listen. I don't step in and say, well, you know, that's not good or this, or mm -hmm. don't you know what God says? No, just Listen, and just that question when many people open up incredible ministry opportunities and conversations. Yeah. Yeah. So the best is to ask a question, or I sometimes see someone is, well, Bob, now if his name is David, you don't call him Bob, <laughs> but say, uh, uh, Bob, what are some of the implications of alcohol in your life? Is it affecting your family, mm -hmm. your children, yep. your job, whatever? And let, and most of them have never thought of it. Yeah, yeah. And I, then I might say, well, what about your children? How's it affecting you with your children? And then always it comes to a part where the door will open, where I'll share my personal testimony about my father. I hardly ever knew him drunk. I mean sober. Mm -hmm. He drank all the time. He was a wino. Mm. Three, four, five bottles of wine every day. Wow. I used to hate that so much when I was a little kid. We're on the farm, and he would hide his bottles. 
And between milking at one cow and another cow, he would slip out, so I'd watch him. I probably shouldn't share this, but it happened. I would go find his bottles and urinate in them. Oh, wow. <laughs> I used to wow. I used to put bottles of my, my yeah. mom and grandma. I'd, I'd put water in them to kind of water yeah. it down, but I never Well, I, never I probably that. should have put water, but I <laughs> urinated in them. Yeah. And, uh, because I despised him so yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, and he, he, he used to yell at me for doing that after mm. he became sober. How could you do that to a father? Yeah. I said, well, how could you do, do it to a son? son? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But listen, share your testimony, yeah. and encourage them to get help. Yep. Mm. Alcoholic Anonymous really helped my father. Oh, wow. Cool. In a big way, Alcoholic Anonymous did. And it ended up helping to bring him to Christ, too. They don't talk about Jesus. They talk about a supreme being. Yeah. And in my conversation, I said, well, Dad, that supreme being loves you, sent his son, Jesus, Amen. to die on the cross for you. Yeah. And I brought him to Christ. And one reason was because of Alcoholic Anonymous. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, Josh, we've taken up a lot of your time, <laughs> yeah. and we wanted to say thank you so much. Well, you know, I needed the money, Craig. I needed the <laughs> we, we, Yeah, we'll pray for our offerings to go up. There's nothing to spend it on right now except food. <laughs> anyway, hey, was there, do I you love any... you, too. i got to be going here. Yes. All right, well, can you but, pray uh, for us before you go? Yes, and if you ever get to Southern California near Dana Point where I live, I'm in the phone book. Yes. Right. No, I'm serious. And you don't have any money, no place to sleep, no food. Look me up and call me, and I'll pray for you. All right. Well, thank you. And, <laughs> and my wife, Teresa. Yeah, you're praying around the phone. Oh, I didn't okay. hear that. Hey, we have Dottie's number. So. <laughs> we have Do Dottie likes my wife, so I think we might be able to, we might be able to come That's and right. uh, see you guys. Let's, anyway, pray. let's yes. pray. Father, I'm so thankful today. It, it makes my day to be able to connect uh, with this new brother and sister I've come to know in Christ. And I pray that you will use their lives to be a, a symbol, to be a model for others. That Craig will, in everything that he does and says, will influence others to, become, to come to know you and to become good dads. Amen. And Father, through all of us, allow us to help others to have the ability to listen to their children mm. and to be there when they need them. And, uh, and not just do all the talking, but a lot of listening. Give us a good day today, and thank you for this, this uh, Skype hookup. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you God so bless. much, Josh, and God bless you. Thank you.